Hey guys, welcome to the show. My name is Spencer, and I will be your recyclable host for today's episode of Expat Soup. Recyclable. Okay. Recyclable. <laughs> No, you you basically got it. Once again, we're coming to you live here from Jimmy V's in Yangzhou, China, with a live studio audience. Give us an applause, people. <laughs> That's the most effeminate Woo! applause I've ever. Was that Jasmine? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jasmine's in the house. I'm sitting Show. here with my good friend Lee. Hello. And uh, our guest today for today's episode is a Mrs. Jazz. Mrs. Miss Jazz Pitts. I got married and I didn't even know that. <laughs> Mrs. Jazz. We do a lot of research. On <laughs> She's both Mrs. and Mr. Jazz Pitts. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, is your middle name Fusion? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. Pitts. Uh, That's Ford an- Fusion. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz Ford Fusion Pits. That's right. And speaking of pits, you brought me deodorant. That's I did. pretty cool. <laughs> I did. <laughs> By the time I got up here, I wanted to use it on my own pits. <laughs> Walking up the pants? Stairs, that's the pits. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I was thinking. Pits is an interesting surname. P I T T S. There is actually like a history behind it that Tell I us. Uh, So essentially, my father's side of the family, they are French Canadian. And I mean, (laughs) (laughs) what I was told, or at least what I recall from being told was that like my Nana, who was a very mean lady, let's just put it that way. I mean, I'm sure she had good things and bad things like Mm -hmm. most people, but you know, she might've just been old and ready. She might, she, she was, she was not great. Um, but she had two circles of friends. Like she had her English friends and her like French friends. And, uh, <laughs> like, certain parts of the family, when they were in certain places in Canada, had, like, the full name, which is Petapa, which means, like, small steps or small feet. Petapa. Yeah. And it's then like when she was in the areas that weren't French, then, like, then their name would be Pitts. Like so, like, I- when they spread out, they were like, well, I don't know, do we do I want French people to like me or so Pitts comes British from people to like French me? Name, yes, it does. It was shortened from the which French Which is, like, name. Onomatopoeia. <laughs> Essentially, like the story that I was given was Pitter when patter. she would answer the phone, she would wait for them to say hello so she could tell whether she would speak Bonjour. French or whether she would speak yeah, in yeah. a totally non accented English. So she would just. Yeah. She would just be just like, <laughs> she would pick up the phone and people knew that they had to say hello. <laughs> she just breathe. breathe. Surely heavy breathing. somebody faked her out that's one time. That's not how phones work. When no. you call someone, they have to say hello first. Exactly. That's what it. But no, she was like. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> and you're from the States. I am. I'm Where? States. Um, I'm from, like, my parents had me growing up in Pennsylvania, but they did this thing where they were like, fuck normal public schools. You're not going to do that. So I didn't really grow up with, like, the Pennsylvania You're going to get homeschooled. School. Yeah, and then, like, oh, all Oh, you got homeschooled? <laughs> for, I actually got, like, the even more lame version of homeschooling, which is cyber No, your school. grandma taught you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cyber school. Cyber you school. went to cyber school? I went to a cyber charter school. Did you get cyber bullied? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Just regular. No, just, just regular. regular. Okay. <laughs> they were like, everybody was so jealous because I only had to go to a brick and mortar school two days out of the week. Or it's th- awesome. Three days in high school. <laughs> I love that it's a brick and mortar you, school. How long are you like <laughs> studying online? Like, um, So essentially how it works is how that particular one worked because they did like a cyber portal with like a charter brick and mortar thing are is you, you an would avenger go- <laughs> those are a lot of words that I i've know. never heard cyber before. portal <laughs> cyber are you from portal, the future and mortar. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? <laughs> i guess it's like all just so like natural to me that i don't know but it makes perfect sense it's just yeah. i've never heard them in how, that combination uh, before. Yeah. how old were you when you were she hasn't training explained. to be optimus prime <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh you were doing a bit sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry keep going yeah so essentially what would happen is like we would go into school the three days out of the week um and we would take normal classes. Brick and mortar three days of the Brick week. Brick and mortar three days. And then like everything, all the lessons, all of the homework, all of the readings, everything else was online. And we would come home and do our homework. And this is in Pennsylvania? Um, yes, that was in Pennsylvania. Small town, suburb, city. Yeah. New, uh, a, a small, yes. yeah. A <laughs> small which, which one? Yes. A village. Was it Pittsburgh? <laughs> a, a suburb <laughs> of Pittsburgh? Or? <coughs> I mean, it was... 
It was a suburb vibe. In it was a suburb vibe in a like small town is literally called a new town and it's like the type of area in Pennsylvania where you have to like travel to another like little town to do the things that you want to do you have to go to town sometimes you have to go to Jersey sometimes you have to go to Philly sometimes you have to go to like the other little towns because your place doesn't have anything to do didn't have a Kinko's. D- I don't even know what that is. It's a copy. Oh, oh photocopy. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's no, no Kinko's there. We had, uh, only had exist. staples. Did you have a Subway? Staples. We had a Staples. We didn't have a Subway. Um, that was in a mall somewhere, Nishamini Mall. Nishamini Mall had the Subway. A lot of good names in yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah, there's some good names. Like, we did have King of Prussia. That's like was the biggest mall at one point. King of Prussia? Yeah, it's like a giant mall. Yeah. And it's named after a king of a <laughs> ancient... Named, no, 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 not named after him. Just, just called the King of Prussia. It's not his uh, name. Oh, okay. <laughs> the King of Prussia Mall. Yeah. His name is escaping me right now. <laughs> uh, so uh, how you're at home doing this online study. You don't yeah. need to go anywhere to do it. You just do it from home. You can do like the vast majority of your studying at home and then you have to come in prepared with your readings to the brick and mortar school. So, so it's basically a... Online courses, just like a college atmosphere. Yeah, it's like online courses, but, this but you started get real when you guides. Were how old? Very young. Like uh, at first, I was totally cyber. How? Like how? with no <laughs> brain. <more. laughs> I feel like this is part of the. Like I, I've been totally cyber for <laughs> nine years <laughs> now. <laughs> this is my first meeting. Uh, <laughs> this is my. Hi guys. This I'm is from the Matrix. Socialite so you were totally cyber from. I was totally cyber, like from. I mean, I <laughs> like the whole time, like, n- like so prim- your whole child from, from kindergarten from, uh, or right after kindergarten. Okay. So right primary after school. Yeah. Like I had like a nurse that, uh, sorry, not a nurse, a, a, um, nun who bullied me. And Online? so then mom was like, that's definitely, oh, that's no, when that the, was, that's when the school that stopped. Was when the they took you out started. of the schools because yeah. of this. Essentially it wasn't just because of that, but it was also because my brother was bullied by his teachers. So they just didn't trust the system. Anymore. Yeah, like my mom had no. Maybe, th- maybe you guys system. were in the wrong. You were in the bully capital of Pennsylvania. Or? <laughs> well, it just it just so happened that like this one particular nun was just a mean lady, and I was just shocking. Like, yeah, an, an, <laughs> an, old an old mean nun. Lady, I, she was <laughs> young. Oh I think no. she was. I think she was mean because she was young. She's like and made this decision too. And she was also not having sex. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm yeah. like she's that like can a young lead to a lot of you know. And she's surrounded by children. She's like everybody else is They're having the sex. <laughs> right. Oh. Well, <laughs> all of the priests are having sex with these kids. <laughs> Why can't I get any? <laughs> she said. Truly, I don't know. But like, she she hated me, man. I couldn't even like. Were you a rebel? No, man. She just she she wasn't she wasn't good with kids. Let's just put it that way. And like, she worked with well, that's kids. That's not what she was supposed to be doing, really. Like I I've always found it kind of bizarre that like religious schools in general, because if you sign up to be a nun or priest or whatever, I don't think that translates well to education they're not the same job description well i feel like my dad went to all catholic schools his entire life and went to catholic college uh sorry your mom was uh french canadian or your grandma that's my father's side of the family is what what are your parents uh where are they from Uh, my dad is american he's like german irish and french canadian primarily Just, just normal old american yeah normal old American he's white you look at him you're like that is a that is an American mm-hmm. right Sket, there uh, he wears a baseball Old cap white, white New he's Balance. white he's got he's he's got he's like got that the phone face on, man the, the, like, the phone on the side of his pants like on geez. the belt almost New Balance. Almost. almost he's just got a he giant, puts the phone in his giant, pocket yes wow wow he's young he, <laughs> <laughs> is he 17 <laughs> he puts the po- he puts the phone in the pocket um or he leaves it at home hmm. so I mean that also balances and out. and Madre uh, she's from Egypt. She is like from Egypt. From Egypt, she came over when she was seven years old. She's told me the story many times. She was literally dragged by her hair, kicking and screaming into America because it was time for the family to come to America. So she that's a long journey to kicking and screaming. <laughs> <to> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you know what? I well, believe that plane. my mother was the whole time. <laughs> I do. I do. You she's can an see amazing it. Woman. 
So uh, she was how old? Seven? She was seven years old, yeah. And she wasn't stoked on the idea of leaving her She's home country? She's seven, man. She did, like... <laughs> seven year was it a, stupid. <coughs> what, what, what her parents left, or...? Yeah, so essentially what happened was my grandfather is, like, a baller. He is this crazy guy. My mother's side. Yeah, my, mom, my mom's father, yeah. My giddu. Giddu is the Arabic word an for... Adip- an Egyptian baller? Yeah, he's an Egyptian baller. So essentially what happened was, like... He's lived through these all of these different phases in Egyptian history, like There's socialism. Been quite a few. Yeah, socialism, British occupation, and like he really wanted to like work for the British people. He's too short. <laughs> like they, they had a height requirement. So I think that they just let him be like a welder. But he came from a family of carpenters, and like he made his own front door on his house in Long Island. Like I know that. But, like, he came from a family of carpenters. And at that point in Egypt, there was, like, a caste system. This was what decade? 80s? A long... No, no, I'm talking about, like, when he was a child. He was young. It would have been, like, yeah. 50s. Oh, oh, and he, oh, okay. 50s, yeah, 60s, I guess. Yeah, he's, he's um, 90. Oh, so, yeah, maybe 40s. Maybe 40s, yeah. Yeah. So, when he was young, yeah, he was in Egypt in the caste system, which meant, like, if you're from a family of carpenters, you're probably going to be a carpenter. Like, you can't just get a government job. Hard to move up. (laughs) Very hard to move up. But he decided to, like, educate himself. And they wouldn't let him be number one in the class because there was another kid whose father was working in the government. So, like, the teacher was like, hey, by the way, follow, like, Tawadros. His last name's Tawadros. Follow Tawadros. Tawadros, the better one. But he's the one who's the number one in class. So, like, there had to be a distinction there. Yeah. And when he tells a story, like, I I tried to figure out how long it took him to complete high school because he would just be like, oh, my God, I can't do it. I need to stop. And then he'd go home, and his mom would be like, you can do it, Munir. You can do it. And then he'd come back, and then he'd go back to school. And I don't think he finished high school until he was, like, 21 or 22. And then he he got into university for medicine. And you had to take like a big, because like socialism, you had to take like a big test and you got ranked in certain scores meant you could do certain professions in the medicinal industry. He very, really wanted to get into pharmacy, but then the like the test that allowed to qualify for pharmacy switched their scores at that, like the last year and made theirs higher than the normal like internal medicine. And he like, he would have qualified for pharmacy if they hadn't changed that like last second. And he's like, whatever, that was God's plan. And then he, because he's extremely religious. Um, so he invented Drake as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a, you have a close relationship with him? Um, it's much closer like now that I'm older, I'd say, than when I was younger because it's kind of hard and to does, relate to does this he person. Speak English well? Yeah, I mean, he, he came to America and he, come? Then he yeah. went back. You know, actually, I don't know the year because he says things on really Well, he terms. brought your mother. Well, first he came. And then he like established himself. Oh, he had. He got a residency back in America, even though he had studied medicine in Egypt to the like fulfillment of the. So he he was a bit of the brain drain from Egypt. Yeah, he was the brain that drained. He's the brain that drained. Okay. Yeah. And he had your mother in Egypt or in the States? He had, yeah. Essentially, how he tells the story is, yeah. At some point, I got married and had kids. (laughs) (laughs) To, To the mean grandma. (laughs) <laughs> he got married to the mean French Canadian. No, 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 oh, no, that's no, 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 that's that's oh, okay. that's just my totally bad. my father's side. Yeah, um, he got married yeah. to <laughs> my my Tata. She's like just like the sweetest woman in the is entire. Is she Egyptian? She yeah. They're both they're both Egyptian. My mom is one hundred percent Egyptian. We got so the DNA 50% testing. We're Egyptian. You're fifty yeah. percent Egyptian yeah. and fifty percent Nokia. <laughs> 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 awesome. Yeah, so how much uh, how much kind of ancient Egypt are you into, if any? Um, I'm ki- I'm kind of into it because <laughs> there's this really weird thing where people who are Christian and Egyptian they believe that they're descended from the pharaohs. So like you have this. We feeling, were kings. Yeah, because you're like you're Coptic Egyptian, so you must have been in Egypt for a long ass time. Like. You're not from Turkey. You're not from the other people that invaded. So there's Egypt. a lot of pride going on. There's a lot of like Coptic pride because, and I think Coptic the other is, is the religion. Coptic. Shout out. Coptic Shout is out a religion the of Egypt. They tattoo their children. It's not. Uh, I don't know what the re- modern day religion is. It. Islam. Islam? Islam. Yeah, Islam. Yeah, Islam. yeah. I didn't know. So Coptic is po- pre-Islam. Uh yeah, Coptic is pre-Islam. Yeah. But it's like essentially, but it's not like it's, it's not like it's modern, a modern thing. It's been happening for a, a while. It's an old, old yeah, it's religion. It's an old situation with like Islam. Do they have many God, poly, 
polytheism? No, no, it's, it's essentially just a really old version of Christianity that's like a little bit Judaic almost. almost. So it's one of the Judeo-Christian religions. But pretty much just Christian. Yeah. So they believe in God. Yeah, they believe in Jesus? God and Jesus. Is yeah. Jesus God? They believe in Jesus and God, yeah. So Interesting. And are you Coptic? <laughs> I am Coptic. I was baptized Coptic. I get to claim Coptic without having to go to... So what is, what is, what is a... What is a tenant of Copticism? Um, <laughs> is that is it? Is it Copticism? <laughs> no, I've never tried. <laughs> I think it's just. I've you never Coptic? heard of Coptic. You I've never heard of Coptic. Are you a Coptist or? I'm. I'm a Coptic. You a would Coptic. say. It. Yeah, I'm okay. a Coptic. I mean, I was. Is there just, a big takeaway that you got from it from uh, the upbringing, or? I would say for me, it was really hard because my mom didn't have enough confidence to teach me Arabic, so like I'd go to mass every once in a while, like on the big holidays, like in Easter. Pennsylvania. Sometimes, actually, that's what I'm saying. Like the other half of my life was in like Long Island and New York, and like all the major holidays, all of the things that make you feel like you're a family, they all happen in Long Island, pretty much, except for like Fourth of July. That would be back in Pennsylvania. Um, but yeah, we would go to like this, these beautiful, beautiful churches in Long Island and, uh, like they're just so beautiful, man. Like you'd go in there and you're just like, am I in another world? In Long Island? Yeah. Long Island. There's some in Brooklyn. There's one in Brooklyn somewhere too, I think. Um, and the, the priests would be talking and the deacons would be doing their little music thing with their little symbols. My cousin was a deacon. What's the garb like? Uh, like a galabea, you know, galabea is like a long Robie, robe thing, like the deacons and like the priests will all wear that kind of stuff. And then like women are on one side, kind of like a Jewish thing. Women are on one side, men are on the other side and you have to wear like, they a, have s- like incense and shit. And there is a lot of incense. It's like amazing. I love the incense and like the bread they make is called Arbon and it's like, <laughs> Can I have more of Jesus's flesh, please? <laughs> like, give me more of this. This is so good. Like, as a matter of fact, uh, like, seconds. my cousin started working in the kitchens and there would be unblessed Arbon. And when she started doing that, I was like, you bring me that Arbon. <laughs> like, it's but so it's good. Unblessed. Yeah, it's unblessed. It's not clean. No, no. Not it's good it. for consumption. You can just eat it. <laughs> but it's not blessed, Jazz. That's dangerous. <coughs> Let me put yeah. it this way. You're if a life. crumb of Arbon hits the ground... A priest will have to pick it up off the ground and eat it. So, like after want, five seconds, like the <laughs> after however <laughs> amount of time, if they saw it happen. Oh, shit. So, like, like the unblessed arbon is good because, like, you can just like fucking stuff it in your face and like crumbs everywhere because. Oh, so you can't. Waste you don't have blessed. to worry. Yeah, you can't waste the blessed. Oh, they give you like a little cube, and you're like, "Can I please have more?" Mm-hmm. Is there is there a defining principle that sets it apart from modern Judeo Christian stuff? Um, like, do you guys yeah, punch the, each other beliefs, at mass or something? I wish system. I could tell you like like one specific tenant that is different, but all I can say is like. Do you read the Bible? Um, I've read the Bible. No, but I mean, is it a part of Coptic belief? Yes, you do read the Bible. Okay. Yeah, you is, read the Bible. Is the Bible edited in any way that's different? Is from it the King James? No, it's, no, it's not the King James <laughs> Bible. It's just, it's no, there's nothing about it that's like super different. Uh, like, I wish I could tell you like a principal tenant, like we don't believe that Jesus is mm-hmm. this or like Probably, that. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I was trying to get to is my mom never taught me Arabic. Um. So I'd be sitting there listening to the priests and I'd get like just the, they speak it in three languages. So everybody's like Roman Catholic masses. They're the longest fucking masses. Well, let me tell you something. You don't know a long mass until you've listened to it in three languages. This mass is just repeated three times. Right? Pretty much. So, and sometimes they don't repeat the whole message for like the sake of time. Yeah, so yeah, you'll get yeah. like the English one. They'll, you'll just be like, and the, the Lord God, the Lord our God, he is risen. As I you said know? before. Like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm surprised there's not But it's a beautiful more. mass. Like it's so beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful. It's really it, funny, it though, probably too. Like I can impersonate priests, and I will if asked. Impersonate the priests? Yeah. Well, I know Catholic priests are just, you know, monotone, make you go to sleep. Catholic. It'd be a good, I like, my, it'd my be dad a good is Roman app. Catholic, so I know It'd be that a good too. app to have, like, a priest talking to go to sleep, like a sleep app. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I just, I want to feel faithful, but I also just want to sleep. Can right. I just... Catholic, yeah. I'd say so, but, like, the... You could probably do that with a Coptic mass too, just because it's so musical. What's the third language that they do it in then? Coptic, Coptic, Coptic Arabic, and English. So Coptic is a language as well. It is, and it was—it's a repressed language actually. That it's kind of like based Greek. in Egypt. 
It's an Egyptian-based language that is is Not illegal Arabic. to speak in public. You can only illegal to speak in public. You can only speak it in the church. So it's like a cultural thing. And like my little wow. cousins who were like a hundred percent Egyptian, they learned a little bit of Coptic when they went to like church school. Mm -hmm. But you don't like learn it. It's not like a spoken language anymore. It's dying. It might be similar to uh, the Jewish the Hebrew language. They only really speak that when they're doing religious ceremonies. I mean, I it's mean. kind of like Greek. It's kind of like yeah. Hebrew. It's kind of like, it's like, it is an Egyptian language. I don't know how else to describe yeah. it. But yeah. they say Kyrieleison. So I'm just saying that's a Greek word. And it's exactly the same. Oh, yeah. So it's, it has some Greek words. It has it. words that are pretty much Greek words, you know. So you love holding on to this feeling of coming from Egyptian connecting, roots yeah. and connecting to your yeah. uh, homeland, et cetera. What, a, what has your, has your uh, mother told you anything that she's found being in America that were different? Like she, you said she was dragged kicking and screaming. Yeah. Was there any moment she's told you about like, oh, America's not. Well, that's the thing. Like both of, <laughs> so both bad. of my parents are from like, they're from like mom's from Egypt, but she grew up in Brooklyn and my dad grew up in Queens. And so like, that's, my, that's such an American tale. Like it's, That's what I'm saying. Like my, um, my grandfather thought like the streets in New York were paved with gold and then he got robbed by his taxi driver on the first day. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then like my mom, like, first of all, she would be like my grandmother coming back from like the store and of course she has like four kids like on the shopping cart like going back and people would like a man would just walk up to her and be like money time like he just take the money out of her top pocket in her shirt and like she knew that right so one day she just put like a whole bag full of pennies in the in the top pocket and like put the other money somewhere else I don't know where and she was just so proud of herself that she only gave him like a dollar fifty and it just felt like some well heavy. that was a lot back then <laughs> <laughs> yeah I could have bought like six loads of bread I don't know um, how much Arban was that my <laughs> Arban is priceless <laughs> uh, my mother even if you drop it on the floor she would just she's just like. She's the weirdest enigma because when she was a kid, she was bullied so hard by like minorities and like black people primarily because that was the demographic of that area. So she's like minorities this bullying minorities. Yeah, pretty that's, much. That's the story of humanity. That's, yeah, that's like totally she, America. <laughs> she yeah. she's literally like I remember I would get ice cream and I'd be afraid that like the the there's this one black kid who just stand out and wait for her to come out and like take her ice cream. Oh, really? So it's just, I'm like, he's literally taking her goddamn ice cream and she's like and a this little is like when your mom was in eight year old kid. She oh, didn't when speak she any English. Over. She didn't speak any English. Somebody told her that is fuck you 70s? means hello. And so she was just a little kid being like, fuck you, fuck you. Oh so, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I that kid so she was like, <laughs> she was, it sucked for her. There was no like, side school where you speak a different language and you get to learn like you just got put into the normal school and then you learn and it's like the people who bullied her the most became like the community that she got entrenched in the most yeah as a matter of fact everybody used to think that she was puerto rican well I mean, she's not like particularly dark she's i don't know she the puerto Ricans aren't really ethnic like, dark, she's like vaguely like, ethnic looking. they probably would have assumed based on no, like I'm saying, like, if she was darker, maybe they wouldn't have thought she was Puerto Rican. Yeah. 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 Um, but so I don't know. A, she's lighter skinned. She's Egyptian. lighter. Yeah, she's yeah. pretty light skinned. Yeah. There's a lot of colorism well, in I Egypt. I mean, I, rem I remember when you told me you were half Egyptian. I was mm. like, you don't look half Egyptian. You should just look white. So like, people ask me if I'm French. I don't know. Boo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know that I... That's the thing. Like, I look at myself and I'm like, what the, What are you? Like, what are you? Well, I can't really, like visually distinguish anything but but it is cool like most americans they they say oh you know i'm half german half irish but it's like you know several generations removed yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. whereas your mom yeah. is was dragged from her home yeah, country she's really like, <laughs> like, don't take me from my so, grandmother so in that case you could you have do a you, lot more clout when how you, do you say you introduce yourself if someone asks you do you just say american just um, for the sake of time or do you go into like it depends on what they're really asking, okay. right? If people, but the thing is that I don't have such a look where people are like, "Where are you from?" You know what I well, mean? In China, surely they. In do China, ask. they ask me, and I'll tell them like, "My dad is American, and my in Chinese, and my mom mom is or in America is is, is, is Egyptian." I'll okay. say I'll say yeah, that. I learned that. the word just so I could say it, and they'd be like, "Oh, IG, yes, IG, that yeah. is yes, it's that very is easy word." word to, um, and Chinese people love Egypt because it's one of the old civilizations like themselves. 5,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> so old. Egypt is 
older. Old, a little older. Well, they 2500 BC. And that's literally five, about 5,000 years, right? Yeah. Or yeah, more. It's really, it's more. really, 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 really old. Yeah. yeah. And we did a lot of cool things. We were the second civilization to have beer, for example. Well, the first had Cheers. to be the first civilization, Cheers. right? <laughs> it was a Su- it was I think it was the Sumerians. Right. Yeah. They were supposedly the first. Supposedly the first. Mm. But they did have beer. Uh as long the as there's been thing, people, there's been I would say a funny thing about identifying Egyptian as Egyptian is just saying like everything comes from Egypt, especially if you're like Coptic. Everybody's like, oh, that comes from Egypt. My aunt once told me, you know, I think that Irish music, it came from Egyptian music. I was like, what the? Well, old cultures love to claim <laughs> everything. Like they're like, it's Chinese, mine. There's like some <laughs> Chinese professors that just claimed English is an old Chinese yeah, dialect. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. I don't know if that's a troll job or what. No, they Dude, literally, no, they said I studied ancient China. <laughs> it's, no. They said there's no uh, culture from Europe in the... F- from the 15th century, before the 15th century. <laughs> so they must have just borrowed They were just twiddling their thumbs. Yeah, right. For <laughs> well, no I mean, they're literally just like beating each other over the head with clubs trying yeah. to figure it out. Exactly. And like then, we're not human yet, really. And then really. we stole Chinese words to make English. That's what they said. And what word? Did they give you any example? There was some you were sitting really there bad like ones. There's like yellow comes from the Chinese, which means like yellow leaf or something like yeah. that. Like, uh, but it doesn't. Right. <laughs> not at no, all. man. No. <laughs> no. Okay. So, yeah. sorry, did we, how much did we delve into your ancient Egypt knowledge? Or are you just kind of interested? I'm not like a super or? ancient Egypt knowledge person. I'm like vaguely interested you got a favorite in ancient Pharaoh Egypt. Or? I like Isis. But, like, Don't if you were like, we're going to clip, <laughs> we're going to clip that off. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna turn into a. <laughs> that's gonna turn into I a new <laughs> gift. Uh oh. <laughs> Our first touch. I of love Cleopatra and Nefer- Nefertiti. Nefertiti's kind of cool, actually, because you know she wore the beard, and uh, that was pretty fucking cool. I think. Um, I just I just like to think of how. I have a beard. So. I was thinking how insane that would be, to be in ancient Egypt and kind of feel like you're the this top. I mean, they were at the top of their game at that time. Yeah, they could literally see the future. And they, they were like, fuck, people are going to say aliens th- built the, there's this. There's the mystery <laughs> of the pyramids, and there's like, they worshipped cats. It's and pretty cool. There's so many cool things that... They worshipped there, every animal. There's though. a reason why, they, mean, why they're... Crocodiles. There's a reason why crocodiles. they're so popular. Like, them as a civilization, they did so many cool things. They were... I think the reasons why uh, like ancient Egyptian society is so great are a lot of the same reasons that ancient Chinese society is so great. It's because they wrote things down and they wanted to be record keepers, right? So we can actually... It, I, I wish that they used a better medium to write on. Hieroglyphs, like papyrus, hieroglyphs are because a lot cooler of stuff than <laughs> Chinese characters. Just going to throw yeah. that out there. <laughs> they are pretty Who doesn't cool. like a picture? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> right. <laughs> I must people like that really easy people will school. write like a complicated character for you and they'll be like it's pictographic and i'll be like uh, <laughs> no i don't that see looks like it my buddy Chad's <laughs> tattoo fire in right. the wood and the chicken is it a man <laughs> <laughs> like people will be like this is the pot and that's the steam coming out of it gee and i'm like i don't know yep. what you're talking about they're but just adding i know that it is pictographic but it doesn't it's obviously not as not all pictographic. of them are. not all of them not are. all of them are yeah. and it's not as pictographic as hieroglyphic so, so. um Going back to the ancient <coughs> Egypt stuff, uh, I was reading an article not that long ago um, talking about ancient Egyptians being more from the south of Africa, so they're actually a lot blacker than we would have assumed. Because a lot of people, when they think of ancient Egyptians, they think more lighter skinned. Mm. But what what do you think about that situation? I don't know if I if think you have any that, ideas. like for example, right now I think that there's there's some really interesting proof that shows like. Nigerian looking sphinxes, for example, like the face will be much more like a black person. African nose. Well, no, I mean, Egypt's in Africa, but I'm talking about like, you're going to see that this looks like a black person and like what a Nigerian would look like, specifically like a wider nose. And like you can, you're looking at that sphinx and you're like, that's a black sphinx. And it's really cool to see that there was a lot of, because there was a lot of trade. Like, that's what made it a great civilization was they traded. Well, yeah, who, and who knew how diverse ancient Egypt was? It's very difficult to say. Because, uh, of course, the people writing things down are going to be the pharaohs. They're going to be the, and there's the other thing is that there is. They're not representations of the time. There's literally <laughs> thousands of years of colorism in Egypt. That's what I'm going to say. Like, 
let's just assume that there's a single individual who's actually descended from Egypt, like the ancient Egypt, and has never mixed, right? Well, and and there's also pe- when people think of ancient Egypt, they're thinking of like the the aristocracy. Of course, that's they're exactly not my of, point. Yeah, the, they're not thinking. Exactly they're not thinking, yeah. thinking of the people. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is that you're not going to go into like an ancient tube and you're going to see somebody draw like a pharaoh and he's black, right? Which is very interesting because if you're going to see a sculpture with very like black features, but you're not going to see it represented in like any of the significant significant scholarly works, well, that says something in itself. Kind of a, a whitewashing, but not white per se. Not just, white, just but there is colorism. Like history. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there yeah. is colorism, and yeah. like just like in in China's an ancient culture, and people don't want to be dark here. That's true. And a lot of cu- and ancient cultures don't have that. I would say, well, these are the two primary dark cultures, like uh, ancient it's, cultures. It's strange how light skin became the better skin. Like, I, mean, I think it's just, I think that the stereotype about it is pretty much m- must be what it is because that's just what everybody will tell you about it. You know, who were the people who were farming the sheep? Even in like my mom's town, like in my mom's small ass town called Ein Shams, it means yeah, the sun. And like the people who farm the sheep, the people who were working out all day in the sun, they were black. Like they weren't just black because they were out in the sun. They were black from heritage. So that's also a very interesting statement to see like who has been providing the infrastructure for a civilization to be what it is. If you just look at society now, people go to big cities for work. Yeah. Back then, it would have been even more so. Oh, absolutely. Cairo There's has got lots of jobs. Let's go to Cairo. Exactly. Right? Let's Egypt go down was the Nile. People Egypt would die was popping off. Yeah. Egypt. Everybody wanted to be there. You Everybody to wanted money. to trade. And Everybody somebody had to. to make those pyramids. Yeah. It was the Jews. <laughs> it, was, it was Jewish people. Slaves. It slaves. Jewish but slaves. <laughs> it was literally like troves have of Have you been Jewish to the pyramids? I wish. I miss like the big family trip to Egypt and now we're like, okay, we're going You've next year. You've never been year. to Egypt. It's very frustrating. I've been to Egypt. You, you don't have? have to, you don't have to go. That's amazing. Egypt is inside of you. <laughs> yeah. It's in all of us, Spencer. Well, the reality <laughs> is that it's actually scary for me to go to Egypt and that's probably because I've just been like raised with like, the general idea of fear. No, fear of being Christian. <laughs> oh, okay. The, yeah. The Coptic. You're Christian. Coptic. I thought you are Coptic. Coptic. Oh, it's, it's a Christianity. A slash or plus? No, it it's a Christianity. It's like one of the oldest Christianities. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's it like has like, oh, it almost like has I'm like Roman Judaic Orthodox principles. Every time you just say I'm Catholic, mm. right? Yeah. <coughs> Is that, that explains some of the questions you were asking. Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, like, what? Sorry. No, I would just, you were like, oh, what's like this? Is it Judaic? I was what's like, your I was, name? <laughs> <laughs> this is Mrs. Pitts. <laughs> Dr. Are you Pitts. out there, significant other? <laughs> I'm looking for you. <laughs> Young Joe China. Studio audience? French. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Ooh. you. Rogue bird. <laughs> so uh, what uh, what brought you to China? How'd you get here? Why'd you get here? Oh, boy. What a long story. All of my stories are long. Damn. Uh, I came to China in high school. As part of like a cultural exchange program, like cyber came here, or you actually came here? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you go through the portal? I did not get beamed into China. Okay. I took a so plane. So this is real school, like everybody else. <laughs> yes, brick and mortar came here. Yeah, I, I brick I brick and mortar came my came all Flesh the way here. Flesh and bone meet brick and mortar. <laughs> That's right. And uh, like my school had a exchange. There was it was so cute. There was this old chemistry teacher who just loved China. His name was Mr. Goebbels. And he would take. <laughs> Isn't that a war criminal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What school did you go to? It's a war criminal, I'm pretty sure. And you said he's Chinese. He's sweet. <laughs> no, he he likes. He's not China. Chinese. He just did loves you meet China. Him in Argentina <laughs> in the forties. No man, he's old though. Shit. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> so he was just. I don't think you'd keep his real name. You change it. Yeah. Go better. He was What's a really it? sweet guy. <laughs> um, and he, he had this little exchange program. He the entire impetus was entirely on him. Like he did the whole thing. So he wanted to go to China. He like really he wanted to go, to, to, go to, China. to go to China. He he China. literally made all the partnerships and he was like, Let's do this and if come, you know? 
And so, yeah, we did. We went to a small town south of Beijing called Shijiazhuang, which is the most polluted city in China, by the way. It's polluted because like a lot of sand comes over from the desert right into the city. And it's just it's very hard to breathe. Um, but it was that amazing. Whole area in the north is horrible for pollution. Yeah, it. it was. It was amazing though. Like it, I just felt so welcomed by the people I was living with, and I really felt like at and that were, point I was amazing school? at Chinese. I was like everything they taught me. I knew I was like, yeah, and I'm you really were in good. High school at this point. I was in high school. Yeah, and then after that, I just I kept on feeling like I really like China. As a matter of fact. I did 17 years of classical violin, and I was really into science. 17 years of classical violin? Yeah. Who's your favorite composer? Definitely Bach. Bach? Yeah, man. Those sonatas and partitas are, like, epic. Like, how can you evoke so much feeling with just one Bach, instrument? Bach's a good go-to. Yeah. He's good. Chopin is really amazing for piano. For piano, yeah. For piano. I'm saying strictly... Yeah. Those little... Tchaikovsky, amazing for, like, orchestral arrangements. So it's, like... But, but personally, JS, as a violinist, I love Bach because Bach is like the ultimate. If you can, you can't hide when you're playing Bach. You just have to be amazing. Um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, so I did classical violin for 17 years, and I was amazing at science. Really wanted to be like a biologist, actually a chemist, because my father's a chemist. And then I was gonna go to college for that, and then I just like I even applied, like I even put like audition tapes for music to certain schools and then i just like switched and i was like east asian so you just had um sorry i want to rewind a little you uh you had this super like uh kind of immigration immigrated parents childhood to where like you're gonna learn an instrument yeah. you're gonna i'm a doctor yeah i left my home country because i'm a badass yeah and i came to and then and my mom's the type of person who can literally learn anything just because somebody tells her to do it like when she went to college she was like what should i do in college and her older brother was like computer science is gonna be a big thing you should do that so she just did and she was she did it and she was successful and she could do it I was like, if somebody was like, hey, you know what's going to be really great? Market investment. And I couldn't just go to college go. and just <laughs> do it. You know what I mean? But my mom can. She's an extremely disciplined and very strong woman. So how's your Chinese? Um, my Chinese is okay. Like it's Bet your mom's is better. Learn Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> if I, <laughs> I, can, I can have like small conversations and get by in Chinese. But what I'm missing is like the feeling like I could talk to anybody about like most things. You know, so it's it's that feeling that makes me you nervous your to learn wheelhouse. in a way. Yeah, like I want to talk to people more, um, but it's it's very difficult because they end up trying to learn English off of me instead of me being able to learn Chinese from them. Yeah, and it I, becomes very very frustrating. Like you have to find the even right people to be talking to because yeah. a lot of people who you have conversations with go in with a mind of you're a foreigner and that's why I'm talking to you. Instead of just genuinely wanting to talk to you, yeah. they're just trying to get something from you, right? I, I mean, it's sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it, it is like that. And sometimes I'm just like, sorry, I don't speak Chinese because I just don't want to go through it. And I can tell because they like, they're like, they just, they saw you on the street. You made eye contact and smiled. And they're like, do you speak Chinese? Yeah. Like, like that. So I was like, mm, yeah. no, <laughs> sorry. Oops. I didn't even say in Chinese that I couldn't speak Chinese, which was hard to do actually. What what uh what do you like to do here in China? Everything. Like I feel like in China I have a like a liberty that I didn't have in America because I was bound by cars and like trying to travel and try to go to places and it takes so much out of you. Even being used to like the two hour travel between like Pennsylvania and New York back and forth and back and forth and like being able to have the impetus to go into the city for something. Did you need to do that a lot? I mean, if like all of my friends, like I went to New York University, so all my friends are in New York. And so I would like literally be like, I'm taking the car to New York. And so it's like $60 in tolls and all sorts of annoying gas and tolls and stuff like that. But y you still have the impetus to do that. And then coming to like even a s what they say is a small city in Yangzhou, it's like, how can anybody say this is a small city? I guess the fact of the matter is whatever, if it is, even if it's small, it's still a I mean, city. Looking at a map, There's still it's things small. to do. Like looking at a map, it's small, but mm -hmm. like you can go to the bar, you can go to the sports park. Well, you can it's, go it's only like, uh, uh, you know how kind of... Uh, 
what kind of person you are by how bored you get. If bored people, uh, interesting people don't get bored. Dude, my, my dad would always say, like, if you're bored, you're an idiot. Like, right. go do something. And I feel like that's definitely inspired me to be the type of person who's always trying no to search for new things so yeah Th- these, like these you things. can do something you can go for a walk like, you can i watch you can find shit. i watch tv and surf the internet at the same time that's what i'm saying like, like, like you can always do so if you're sitting there and you're like man i really don't want to watch another episode of like whatever come on what what were you gonna say come i was on. gonna say doctor who <laughs> <laughs> i knew it was nerdy <laughs> like, or like supernatural like some stupid like i don't know what any of that is you don't know doctor, you don't know doctor who who david hey. tennant hey. <laughs> oh. I was hey. somebody had to set me up <laughs> Uh, I know Doctor Who. It's a time traveling doctor. Yeah, he's in a, a spaceship called the TARDIS, which can travel time and dimensions, I think, as well. Yes. That's what the D stands for. Yes. Going Doing appendectomies on Mars. That's right. Actually, he does do surgery at one point. He does pretty much most things. And and also, he, he has changes. Two hearts. The TARDIS? <laughs> That's, That's the name problematic. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, you just made up. I never <laughs> thought of it. Never even once thought of that it's until you just <laughs> said it, you bastard. I just ruined Doctor. I just Who really love you. David Tennant. To be honest, you I didn't like really the newer. Is he like the Matt original? Smith? I haven't watched him. Capaldi. No, he's not the original. You didn't he, watch Matt Smith. No. So you just rewatched the like. I just watched David Tennant really because I just really love him as an actor. He's he's really good. Like, he's I'm really like, good, yeah, he and really like good. I feel like he takes ownership of his role. Have you seen him in Jessica Jones? I have seen him in Jessica Jones. Very Extremely impressed with that. And he also did the new series with um, Good Omens. He did Good Omens. Good Omens, very good. And he was really good in that, yeah. too, when yeah. he was killing the plan and he was like, that's what you get for having spots. So what's your big takeaway from being an Egyptian uh, American? Um, what, what advice would you give for future generations of uh, cyber... Punk <laughs> Egyptians in America. <laughs> I would say, like, having gone through, like, all of the, like, you must get an A plus when there isn't even an A plus available to get, and, like, all of that stuff, you know, that comes with being a first, <laughs> like, a first, first generation, first generation person in America. Um, what I would say is, like, no matter what you achieve from that, always just remember that, like, you will find what you want from actually doing things and experiencing them. Don't like, feel you're sorry not, you're for not, yourself. Yeah, like, don't feel sorry for yourself. Like, if if you're sitting there like, oh, sh-, like, I'm not going to say that I'm somebody who has passions, but all I'm saying is that, like, if you're yeah. sitting there like, man, I spent my whole life just trying to get that A, you know what I mean? And you never went you to, like, a dance all, class, you or you never friends. went kickboxing, or you never tried to, like, find what you like to do. Then, like, you're not living life. You were. That's you were, what I would say. You were pinholed on one aspect yeah. as a B is okay, to. right? No, <laughs> a B is not okay. How is, dare uh, you? A B is fine. How right? dare you? I'll take two C pluses. Thank you very much. <laughs> what, uh, Actually, you know, I have a. <laughs> speaking of grades, what would you give this interview? I would give it an A plus. Oh wow, that's right. You're new, you're our new sponsor. You let me ramble on, and you didn't even stop me. I he, love. He that. was barely listening. It's okay. I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was really glad on to my be here, man. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh god, has it been five minutes? Please yet? stop talking. Please stop talking. Please <laughs> no, it was awesome, Jazz, and we're gonna have another ramble session soon. Shoot. Yeah, uh, I love that, man. But uh, any, uh, any, any. I'll uh, high five you. <laughs> That's what you wanted. <laughs> I was like, I'll change it, but uh, down low. <laughs> That's right. All right, there we go. I wasn't too slow. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, any parting words you'd like to give the uh, these uh, idiots that watch the show? Uh, I mean, these awesome people. You just called your you mom an idiot. Your mom <laughs> an idiot. You're like my mom is fifty percent of my audience. I'm the other fifty percent, by the yeah. way. Oh, sh- oh shoot. Um, what I would say is, honestly, you asked me so many interesting questions. And more people should listen to this because I think I definitely will now because awesome. I want to see all the different stories that people have told. Yeah. You know, like you, you asked me things that I didn't expect to talk about today. And so I want to kind of see. Next time we'll ask you normal shit. Oh yeah. I'm fine yeah. with that too. But you know, cool. we'll get more into Dr. I want to see okay. some of the stuff. What would be a, like a good episode you'd recommend me to like start out with listening to expat soup? Probably Dario. Dario is a good episode. He's Dario. a fun one. Yeah. Or a uh, Ruben. He's a pretty cool guy. Never heard of him. <laughs> 
Hey, hey, shout out to our studio audience, yo. All right. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, We'll be back with more soon. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) Toodaloo.